Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the views of the management and staff of Guardian Radio. And good morning, good morning. Welcome to Guardian AM here on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Of course, C.A. Nuri is uh, not here today. This is Guardian AM with C.A. Nuri, but I am Dr. Cleveland Aeneas III, also known as Cahoon, Anku Sarah. And of course, we, as always, have a, a, a show that's planning, a plan to... Uh, to educate, to stimulate, and and to cause conversation, uh, I have I have a wonderful guest uh, again this week, and I'm going to introduce him in just a second. Uh, once we do open the phone lines, <clears throat> you'll be able to call at three two three six two three two three two five four three one six three two five four two five nine. Of course, in the family of islands, toll free two four two three hundred five seven two zero. Uh, of course, uh, the text line is powered by BTC, and uh, the text is 422-4796. The standard tax rates do apply. We are also on uh, guardiantalkradio.com uh, for those of you listening on the app. And, of course, we are on uh, cable 969 so however you are listening to us today, we are grateful to, to, to have you. Um, there's a lot going on in the country. There's a lot going on <coughs> uh, in the world. Um, and today's show is, is about um, respecting and understanding uh, a wider context. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of different things today. Um, but I want to start today's show with, with, with a Bible verse, all right, that I think is very, very important for us to reflect on the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 26. It says, Fear them not therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. Let me read that again. Matthew 10 and 26. Fear them not therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not and hid that shall not be known. I know at the beginning of the year, Cat Williams set the internet on fire because he was just revealing things about his industry. But here it is in the Bahamas. We're in the last month of the year, and many things are being revealed in the country. Um, we're not going to specifically highlight what everyone's been talking about all day, every day. We'll, we'll touch on it. But today's show is a show that talks about uh, the wider context. You know, we, we as a people, we're seeking justice in a system that was built on injustice. We are seeking justice in a system that was built on injustice. We are not Bohemians, those of us who can go back for generations um, merely because we chose to be Bohemians, all right? Uh, my family in particular, on my father's side, of course, my mother is a Hana. My father is an Aeneas. I'm an Aeneas. Um, my grandfather wrote a book called Bain Town, uh, where he really uh, encapsulated to the best of his ability the experience of uh, the Aeneas family, where his, my grandfather's great-grandfather, uh, he and his sister were kidnapped out of Nigeria and brought here to the Bahamas. Um, that ancestor of mine, Britain Aeneas, he had one son, and that one son had nine sons, one of which is my great-grandfather, W.V. Aeneas, who was the founder, one of the founders of the Church of God, uh, who gave birth to uh, Cleveland Aeneas Sr. Uh, he and my great-grandmother, Arabella Ferguson, uh, Foxillian, <coughs> um, which is why my, my movements between being done and, and, and Fox Hill is, is divine. Um, I'm saying all of this because, you know, stories of being down in Fox Hill and Adelaide and Gambia and other African um, villages uh, or communities, within, in, 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 especially in Nassau, 
and uh, we talk about these liberated Africans. Well, today I have a, a special guest that I think many of you know. Um, he's going to, we're going to be talking about this idea of liberated Africans, and we're going to tie this reality into what has happened over the past few days. The mace was thrown out of the house um, yesterday, and the country is is um, alarmed by many different things. We had a young girl who, who was brutally killed. We had an elder who was brutally killed. And we have over 100 murders again this year. There's so much going on. But but we have to contextualize it and understand why these things are happening. I want to introduce my, my dear brother, Christopher Davis. And please give us your uh, other title, your other name, uh, so, so I don't, I don't want to say it and mess it up, but give us your, your, your name, John Kwa the second. I want to get yeah. the whole name. Yes, right there. Yes, yeah. Nano Asafahini John Kwa the second, or John Canoe the second. Yeah. Um, but my family named me. Well, not my family. My, my mother named me Christopher, yeah. and Davis, of course, like everyone else. Though it might be a Welsh name, it's in fact my slave name. Yes. but uh, we know. <laughs> yes. Am I still being okay? Okay, okay. I thought it wasn't being heard. So, welcome, welcome to Guardian AM. Um, let's just dive right into it. Um, this show um, uh, is manifested out of us having a conversation about this um, ancestor, <clears throat> my grandfather's great grandfather, Britton Aeneas. And I, and I remember meeting my, my brother, uh, John, John Quad II, and I say, Bro, why would my grandfather's great grandfather name himself Britain. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like what yeah, yeah. what what you no know, say I don't I, I don't I don't that don't sit real with me. You understand? And we had a light conversation about it. Fast forward I think maybe it just may have been a few weeks after he came to me with some findings. Please share your findings and then we'll go from there. <laughs> yeah so um <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of research of course on the so-called liberated Africans in the Bahamas. So those that don't know, you know, communities like Fox Hill, Adelaide, you know, Congo Town, South Andres, and many more scattered throughout the Bahamas um, were sort of um, established and or renamed um, and settled by the so-called liberated Africans, who were people that the British um, took who were captives on the slave ships of their enemy nations of Europe, so a Spanish slave ship, um, even an American um, slave ship, and they would take those people and, of course, settle them. However, the flip side of that, um, what my research is now showing me, which is why I call them displaced Africans and not liberated Africans, mm -hmm. um, is that, you know, they're, left, of course, very oppressive. And oftentimes they found themselves um, working side by side and living amongst um, the enslaved people of the Bahamas um, and, of course, doing the same work. Um, and of course, recently I stumbled upon a newspaper article, which I know that Guardian is celebrating their 180th yes. um, anniversary. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I know that um, they were kind of highlighting their historical snippets. Yeah. Um, this one came, I think, a little too late, but it would have been perfect um, for mm -hmm. that. But we found it actually in the Guardian newspaper issue mm -hmm. uh, in 1866, yes. um, where Britain Aeneas um, actually attempted suicide, mm. right? Um, and of course, since we've spoken, I've done a lot more and made great headway um, in this um, aspect of research, right? Mm. Um, and when you look at it, of course, these liberated Africans were not people. That's why even when you look at the island of New Providence, put by the British colonial government, mm. you have um, Adelaide, which is at the extreme southwest of the island. You have Gambia, which is at the extreme northwest of the island. Mm. Fox Hill, you know, all of them are around from the proverbial city of Nassau, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so that's how you, you saw the suppression. And as I said, they found mm. themselves side by side. Um, now to the naming part, right? Mm. Um, that question you asked was such a great one, you know, and we ain't trying to cast no aspersion, but as you know, there's been talk that um, he chose that name willingly right. um, <laughs> because he wanted to thank the nation that freed him from right. slavery, right? But so Britain Aeneas is himself who found himself, um, though he was a bit fortunate because the guy who he was a quote unquote apprentice to, um, mm -hmm. which was, um, I forget the first name, but his surname was Aeneas mm -hmm. and that's why he took it. And just like the enslaved African um, these so-called liberated Africans were forced um, to adopt these names. Mm -hmm. And only in certain incidences, it really had a lot of nuance to it, but only in certain incidences were they able um, to uh, change their name. But they still had to anglicize it in some ways. So yeah. one of the famous ones would have been Chance Harvey 
um, from Fox Hill, mm -hmm. who came on the slave ship Peter Mowell, which came from the Congo in 1860. Mm -hmm. um, and some of his family members and him built St. Paul's Baptist Church right there on Bernard Road. Mm -hmm. But Chance wasn't his actual name. His name um, was something that would have been similar or sounded similar ah. um, to Chance. <clears throat> and then, of course, you have Kujo Wiley, mm -hmm. who was right there at Clifton Heritage Park, where I work. Mm -hmm. um, and anyone who wants more information on this, you know, always come yes. and see me at the park. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. there most days. Is, mm -hmm. um, or you could call in and, and request, um, you know, me that I be there and we could talk all about this, particularly if you are known to be descended um, from these displaced, um, so-called liberated Africans, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, in the case with Kujo, um, and it's not because William Wiley was, um, he, though he saw himself as this visionary slave owner, um, he was still quite brutal. He still used the whip. If you got 12 lashes or more on his plantation, everyone had to stop working and come watch that person wow. get lashes which could have been up to 39 lashes. Um, he put cases on people for nothing because they failed to finish their Saturday's allotment of work and they tried sneak and do it on Sunday morning. And then he imprisoned them because they was quote unquote working on the Sabbath. You know, so this wow. um, was the life of, of African people in the Bahamas. And as I said, typically you found that these liberated Africans were living among the enslaved doing the same jobs. Mm -hmm. And we actually have a primary source <clears throat> that came from a man named Abu Kelly um, at first, it was thought that he was from Nigeria, but we now know that he's actually from Senegal um, because um, deep in one of his letters and one of the lines, he mentions that he is from the clan of Diop. Right, mm. and anyone who knows the name Diop knows that it's a name from Senegal. That's right, Sheikh Anti Diop. There you go, yes. and more specifically, it belongs to a specific royal clan of the Wolof um, people. Mm -hmm. Right, um, and my, me myself, I did a very controlled DNA test and found that um, um, the, the largest African group represented in me actually comes from the Senegambia mm. um, region as well. So for me, it oh. has a little yes. personal feel to it too. Mm -hmm. Now back to Abu Kelly um, in his letters, um, he said that. He, he was essentially saying, listen, I'm this big time prince. You have me here working on the side of these enslaved people. <laughs> I ain't supposed to be no slave. Right. Where I come from, I's a prince. Right. Man, if you send me home, I get my old man to send you all. This is this the type of stuff wow. um, he was saying, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the second letter, you can see he's starting to get frustrated. And then he was pretty much saying, listen, um, and I have to work here, picking cotton, doing all these things. And if I don't do the task, they tell me I'm whipped by a cream colored man. Mm -hmm. You know, so here you have not just an exposure of the experience of the so-called liberated African in the Bahamas. Um, but you have the experience of the enslaved working. That's, that was his big um, complaint, yes. right? Um, and of course, Abu Kelly is one of the original settlers and founders of what is now known as Adelaide Village. Ah. And he arrived on the slave ship La Rosa, mm. separate from the one. So the one that your ancestor arrived on was also was called the La Rosa La that Rosa. arrived in 1816. Mm -hmm. But there was another ship that arrived in 1830 late 1830, early 1831, around there, mm. um, because it was a shipwreck, and by the time they brought them to NASA, it was January. But the shipwreck itself, I believe, happened in late December of 1830. Mm. But that was when um, what we now know as Adelaide Village um, started to be fully established with the people mm. from that ship. And we now know that many of them were royals um, um, from the Diop clan. And I actually met a Diop, um, a Senegalese Diop guy, who was the curator of the actual information that they use um, in the exhibit about my my research. So I mm. thought that that was like wow. this um, sort of magical that's divine, man. moment, right? Yes, <laughs> you know? yes that's um, the one. I showed them the letters and all of that, and um, you know, and since then we sort of been in touch with each other and keeping in touch, you know. But um, mm. it's important for us to realize that this was the um, true experience of colonization. Um, here in the Bahamas, right? Mm -hmm. um, and this is um, the root cause of almost every single issue um, that we have socially. Right, and, and let's slow down. Don't just skip over that part. Because <laughs> see, that to me is almost like the yeah. crux of this show for me, right? Right. The social ills in this country, whether they are political, educational, religious, et cetera, et cetera. See, th these things are not happening in a vacuum. Right. We We... We get caught up in the minutia of the moment. Right. But oftentimes, we don't have these types of conversations to appreciate the conditions that are necessary to allow such things to keep happening in, in perpetuity. It's almost like we are in this, not almost, we're in this vicious cycle where things are repeating themselves and we believe that a change here or a change there um, is going to magically change everything. Not to say we don't need right. change, right? right? But but um, 
ta- I, I, I want you to expound on that just a little bit more. You see, the, 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 what we're talking about is the root cause of what we are experiencing today. Right. So certainly. So um, for one for one incident, um, you know, you have um, great psychologists um, like Dr. Kress, Francis, um, Francis yes. Welsing. Um, yes, yes. You have Dr. Uma, of course, who've been doing this thing mm-hmm. in our era um, mm-hmm. now, um, and many, many others, you know. Yeah, Amos, um, Amos and then Wilson, have, right, cetera, 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 right, yeah. even now, and they were saying it, yes. but now, of course, later on, mainstream scientists now are saying it too, mm-hmm. that, hey, this trauma, um, trauma is certainly hereditary, mm-hmm. right? Um, and able to enslave our ancestors, right? So you wouldn't hear me really say slaves. I would say enslave people. Yeah. Don't care how big the mouthful is. Typically, if, yeah. I, if you hear me say it, it's a slip, or it's me probably quoting something or saying the name yeah. of some institution, right? Mm-hmm. Like the transatlantic slave trade, right? Right. But other than that, I say the enslaved. And the way they were able, but people don't realize, so... You were fools like Kanye West who years ago said it was a choice, yeah. not realizing the level of violence um, that was needed um, and the threat of violence um, that was there and that was real as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and in order for someone to enslave you, it's just like today. Right. For you to enslave someone today, you have to completely break them. You yeah, know, yeah. I'm a bit of a nerd and I like certain shows like Game of Thrones, even though we <laughs> severely underrepresented, yeah. but I speak on and fire, but enjoying the show at the same time. Yeah. Um, and of course, there was this character named um, Theon Greyjoy, mm. who was a prince, a strapping prince. He was, you know, sleeping with all these girls and he was just loving life on top of the world, not a care in the world. Mm. Um, then he was kidnapped by a dreaded man. I think his name is Ramsey. Mm. Um, and he pretty much turned him and changed his name to Reek. Wow. And in order for him to do that, the level of violence and depravity that was used um, is something I don't I don't even want to get into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to break him, show, right? Yeah. But exa- exactly, it's something him. to break him. Yeah. And this very overconfident um, young um, prince um, now became a shell of himself. He pretty much was almost um, a one step away, almost from an animal, wow. and, and didn't even see the humanity within himself. Wow. You know, um, which is what we're seeing today on our streets and in our right. homes. Exactly. In our schools, etc. Right. You know, and then of, on, on top of that, you have had a for for centuries. This has only been starting to ease up in the twentieth century. You know, in the, yeah. I'd even say in the mid twentieth century where they start, but racism and these things have been entrenched Mm -hmm. um, for over 600 years Mm -hmm. now. Um, And this began with papal bulls, which were these large widespread decrees passed by the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. Um, One was called Dom de Versus, um, passed by Pope Nicholas V, if Mm -hmm. my memory serves me Mm -hmm. correct, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And of course, this was essentially the moment, if you had to pick a moment, pick a document that started um, the enslavement of African people, even before Bartholomew de las Casas and these people Mm -hmm. um, were even born. You know, um, it would be it would be that document. Mm-hmm. Um, and since then, we went through all of these things. All because slavery is all about economics. Mm-hmm. But in order to justify this, they had to propagandize black people, put us at the bottom of the barrel, make people hate us. Um, this was, of course, inextricably linked um, with religion, right? Mm-hmm. And to this day, um, West African religion is, is illegal in a country that's ninety five percent African, even though some people are saying eighty percent, uh, and it's twenty percent. I don't know where they see the twenty. Right. from right that would mean that one out of every five people in the Bahamas is white and right. we know that ain't true no right um so and of course white in the Bahamas in but white is everywhere no. else but we can no. leave that right yeah there. yeah you know but um back to the oppression you know that our ancestors really suffered from um and even when you look at you know they had some statistics that came out um a while back about, um, you know, it was a census, I believe, actually. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. And then it talked about marriages, right? Yeah. Um, and they said not only are marriages breaking up at a higher rate, right. marriages are also not even happening mm-hmm. anymore. And that is because a lot of our, on one side, a lot of our ideals have shifted, right? Mm-hmm. But on the other side, and this, of course, is a part of the oppression that happened that was rife in the Bahamas, you know, and you had a lot of sexual violence towards enslaved women yes. that began from that time. So I could show you doc, um, a document from the year, I believe it was 1827, mm. where three people were executed in one day. Um, wow. And one of those was actually a white man who had raped his 11-year-old niece, wow. right? Um, and the other two um, were, were blacks. One actually seemed a little shady. It seemed like he actually might have been innocent. Mm. But the other one um, did it to another enslaved young lady. Um, but that don't speak to the real culprit who was actually the enslaver themselves, mm. right? Yes. Um, and this was something that was rife. Um, and with this, you can imagine that enslaved men, the only 
sort of humanity or peace that you could possibly find in enslavement was to you know try, try to marry and have a have a yeah. have a family right mm -hmm. and even within that though came risk because with that family you pretty much resigning yourself to being in that situation mm -hmm. almost for the rest of your life because as you have a family now you can't just run away right because if you run away you yes, know yes. and then when you look at the, the the just extreme rate of sexual violence that's been experienced right mm -hmm. um and so this points to one aspect which is this complete degradation of the role and the humanity of black women um in the bahamas in general which manifests in all sort of other ways, mm -hmm. in subtle ways and in overt ways. Mm -hmm. um, we even see in people's opinions on the current Speaker of the House, but you notice that about half of these comments come in and they always have a little sly mm -hmm. sexist remark mm -hmm. and they're talking about yeah. she acting too masculine and it's like, was acting masculine though? Right. Because my grandma used to row us. <laughs> when it's time to <laughs> row, my grandma used to row, yeah, you know? Yeah. And I see, I don't see that it's neither masculine or feminine right. necessarily. It's necessary. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's the subtle way. But um, the more extreme way, of course, is some of these horrific crimes that we have been seeing recently, of course, but it's been something that's been plaguing us um, for quite a while. Mm. But the difference is um, through colonization um, and through this need to conform to the ideals of Western society, um, within that um, comes this these social ills that we could see today. Mm. Um, and so people often make even a statement too, like, and I hear it all the time, they make it seem like, Black people, quote unquote, black people in the Americas are like some of the most violent people, and they talk about black hmm. and black. So, first of all, Africans in the Americas, black people in the Americas are not the most violent. Right. Indigenous Americans are the most violent. So, mm -hmm. when you look at nations like um, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, who are those people? Those people are actually indigenous Americans. Mm -hmm. But I'm not saying that to say anything um, on any racial standpoint, because race is a social construct. But what I am saying, what is the similarity between Africans and Americas and indigenous Americans? We are colonized people. Mm -hmm. um, and particularly those of us that are still um, holding on to certain systems that were um, once that were once being run by our enslavers, by our colonizers. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the truth of it. And so even the symbol of the mace that people say is the symbol of the power of the people. That's only true to a certain degree because the mace don't represent that. Mm. Every both sides of law enforcement, every lawyer, every police officer, immigration, customs, as I understand it, and of course our Royal Bahamas Defense Force, every politician, they don't swear allegiance to the people. They swear allegiance um, to the real um, To the king, head, head heirs, state, and successors right? forevermore. And this is actually an issue for every single city. And that actually goes to the prime minister mm -hmm. straight straight down mm -hmm. and across you mm -hmm. understand that that is something and even white behemoth should be concerned um with that mm -hmm. because that is a sort of slap in the face um to autonomy mm -hmm. however through colonization we have been taught to value um have these sort of british values that we cling on to mm -hmm. you know so i know even a lot of officers they be like oh it's the royal if you say the police force they is correct it's yeah. the royal yeah. bahamas yeah. police force right. and now if that was something that came from us you're right and we sort of left that system or not even or threw it away or changed our system and then re rename it mm -hmm. and say, you know what, we still can call it royal, but this royal and so right. and no, and then we change the names of the rankings and do it mm -hmm. sort of in you know, mm -hmm. in, in our our actual culture, which of course is African yes. to it. Um, but you could see even certain British appropriations in the police force. Yeah. So and that's like where you see the leopard skin. So anyone and that's attached to the Safo culture in Ghana and many other cultures mm -hmm. that you could see mm -hmm. um, throughout Africa, right? And of mm -hmm. course, leopards don't come from England, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, and neither do the three lions, you right. know? But um, all of this sort of, remember, though we now almost seemingly willingly do it, I still say that it's not willing because it was something that was deeply entrenched in our ancestors. Mm -hmm. And so even when you look at the practice of West African religion, which is blanketed, um, in a term known as obio, you mm -hmm, know, and these mm -hmm. things are legal in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. um, and this did not even just refer to your religious belief. Mm -hmm. This referred to any African custom that you did that mm -hmm. made Europeans uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, um, this also added to the, the aspects of self-hate, right? Mm -hmm. So you have some comments, people saying, oh, the Bahamas is Africanized and Africanized this, and there's always this negative connotation to it. Um <clears throat> Though it's not as prevalent in the Bahamas, but skin skin bleaching has been mm -hmm. a huge issue. Mm -hmm. Though in our defense in the Bahamas, and from what I could see, 
are far more people are now uh, seem to be proud of their African look, yeah. you know, yeah, far yeah. more. So yeah. you don't see so many women um, bleaching perming. so hard and yeah. perming so much, yeah. and you don't see so much men um, putting whatever in their hair, yeah. or yeah. you know, yeah. you know. Yeah. So that that's that's of course a major plus. But that's who we are. Um, as a people. And of course, our history does not just involve slavery as well. That's extremely yes. um, important to know. That is just our history, real, like it or not, in, in what we now call the Bahamas, mm -hmm. right? Um, and also, to hold on to these colonial vestiges, you know, many people see themselves as nationalists in our um, but that, that patriotism um, goes in hand with a uh, for lack of use of better word, almost like a, at least a slight resentment mm. <laughs> for your colonizer. Wow. Because us get who we get independence from. Mm. Right. You know, we call it majority rule, but what does majority rule mean? What made us the majority? What was shared that made us a majority? Mm. That's our African heritage. Right. AKA being black. Right. You understand? Um, and I've seen now that the definition um, for the flag, they say, oh, it don't mean black people, it mean the power of the people. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> it mean black people, but yeah. it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. Man, that's what it mean, you know? Yeah. And so um, we are, um, it's almost like we have so many of these conflicting values right. um, and, and that prevents um, progress on every level. Um, Definitely. And delving into your history, of course, is one of the greatest and biggest unifying factors. Well, you know, yeah. I, I I always you know we 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 say we are a Christian nation. We say that we 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 love the Lord, we love God, etc. Um, I'm always here to challenge that. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm always here to challenge the fact that 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 we 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 love to praise, we love to hold our religion high, but. Because we are suffering and because we are destroyed, it, it is the result of a lack of knowledge. Right. And one of the first and most important uh, types of knowledge anyone needs to have is knowledge of self. You right. understand? Um, we as a people have been mingled with a perverse spirit, which is why it's so difficult at times to pinpoint where exactly the corruption is coming from. It's almost like you have, you know, like cancer. Right, you you don't know exactly where you got it from because it wasn't one place. You know, it was, mm -hmm. it was some some stuff you ate over here, some stuff you drank over here. You stood too close to this. It's a combination of things that that results in this cancer. And so we as a nation uh, are suffering from a cancer that ultimately um, is is not going to be properly dealt with until we examine the causes, the root causes of why we are in the predicament we are in. 323-6232, 325-4316, of course, in the family of islands, 242-300-5720. I saw a caller uh, trying to jump in here earlier. Forgive me, caller. I was just trying to make sure that we set the table here with our guest today, Christopher Davis. Uh, John Quad II is in the house, and he's sharing... Uh, a perspective that I think we need to pay more attention to. Um, as as I've been sharing and 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 and, and Rada Davis has been sharing uh, for many years now, um, we as a people have to uh, embrace who we truly are and understand the importance of it. Let's let's run to the phone lines, Kermit, uh, and see who who we have here on Guardian AM with C A Nuri. Welcome, caller. You on the air live? Good morning, Uncle. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Davis. Yes, yeah, sir. Good morning. Yeah. Anyway, I'm um, out in the offering that you uh, you had there, Abu Kelly. Yes. Now, you know, I think, you know, that his situation probably goes kind of deep into our, our issue of conflict, you know, because, you know, mm -hmm. the question that that came up to me immediately, right? Uh -huh. How does the prince end up on a slave ship? <laughs> yeah. You know, how does the prince end up on a slave ship? And the only way a prince can end up on a slave ship, you know, it had to be an internal exercise. Mm. You know, uh, and, you know, I think, you know, we, we, are, we are probably struggling in that regard, you know, in terms of, you know, we don't really trust each other. You know, it's like we, you know, like each time we see a face that is, is like ours, you know, it's almost as if, you know, 
we are not too sure who actually cracked, cracked the bush, you yeah. know, <laughs> all those years ago, you know. Right. And that, <laughs> you know, and this, and, you know, a, a phrase is making around us right now, you know, it, you know, it started, um, um, you know, um, you know, and that phrase is what, get him, get him. Get him. Right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. So Sean and Don was know. quick. He was too quick for them. <laughs> Get him! You know, you know, it's almost funny. Yeah. Okay? You know? But, you know, you know, you know, it can be, you know, you know, you know, or why we don't trust, or why we don't trust each other. Sure. That's a Certainly. Beautiful, beautiful you know, question. You know, I know, and we dressed up, and we dressed up in the, um, um, in the regalia and the forms of our oppressors, mm-hmm. and we attempt to bring justice and equity, you know, and, you know, you know, you know, even in that regard, you know, we, you know, it's all flawed. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, don't trust the instruments, and we don't, and we, and we don't trust the way the guys dress, you know, who speak for us. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's let's dive into it. Let's yeah. dive into it. Uh, yeah. Let me let you answer that, and then we can go right to the next call. What, what say you, right. my brother? So um, there's actually a, a, a book. I forget the author, but it's pretty, pretty much speaks to the origins of mistrust among the African diaspora, right? And you speak of Abu Kelly. So he actually, first of all, spoke. Um, well, let me just start with this. So in my opinion, one of the greatest lies told on us and that we continue to tell on ourselves um, is this idea of total complicity of Africans in the transatlantic slave trade. Mm. Um, so first of all, we have to think and take a step back and realize, isn't it funny that Africans are the only people blamed for their own genocide? So that's number one. Yeah. Number two, we have to realize the reality of the political situation. There were many royals who were kidnapped um, throughout Africa. The reality is Europeans function with total brutality and what people don't realize is these people were in acute survival mode, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and Speaking of the had, Africans. We right. Were so you had mm-hmm. three options um, mm-hmm. that happened. Now, the demand for has happened because of the genocide committed on indigenous Americans. Right. So that's first and foremost. Right. Bartholomew de las Casas say, mm-hmm. hey, well, we're killing too much of these indigenous Americans, so let's go take the Africans and make them do the work. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when the transatlantic slave trade began to pick up in the mm-hmm. early 1500s, when you're talking about Spain and Portugal, mm-hmm. right? And it was happening in Europe before that, mm-hmm. right? Um, now, if you think about it, we're in this radio station right now. Mm-hmm. And we hear that there's a band, a group of people that come in, and they kidnapping and enslaving people, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and they done hit that building, hit that building, hit that building. Mm-hmm. We the leaders of a crew, your family here, my family here. What type of discussions we can be having? Before? We know they coming. Yeah. What type of discussions me and you could be having? We only have three options. Yeah. Fight, run, or conform. Mm-hmm. My now, running was always more difficult than people assume because the laws in Africa were always, um, you know, sort of stringent and all this, you know, mm-hmm. and everyone trying to survive, mm-hmm. you see? Some of them went and met them to try to conform to prevent that horror happening mm-hmm. to them, you see? And when you talk about genocide, um, to even go to World War II, for example, people, when people trying to survive, they'll do anything, yes. you know? Um, but in other genocides, they are not labeled traitors because um, that is understood, mm. right? You understand? Yeah. Um, and, but with Africans, of course, because of the historical narrative, we are taught to do that. So it really is rooted in all of these things. And yes, personal betrayals happen between leaders and on other mm-hmm. levels. Um, but it's important not to blame that because that's essentially the same cycle that we're talking about right now, right? Now, right? We're going to run to a break. I hear the, the, the music chime in here on Guardian AM with C.A. Nuri. My name is Dr. Cleveland W. Enius III, also known as Kahun Anku Sarah. Guest today, Christopher Davis, John Quad II. We'll be back right after this. Four Bahamians face some level of food insecurity. AML Foods remains committed to helping. And this year, through our Feed 5000 program, we'll donate $30,000 to provide holiday meals to families in need. But we need your help. 
from November 4th to December 18th, show your support and donate at the register at Solomon's, Costray, Fresh Market, Exuma Markets, or Domino's Pizza in Nassau, Grand Bahama, or Exuma. Together, let's put an end to hunger. This holiday season, the Cookie Caterer is bringing Christmas to life with every bite. Indulge in our festive flavors. Eggnog Snickerdoodle, Winter Ginger, Christmas Sugar, and the irresistible Eggnog Cream Cheese Stuffed Ginger. Need the perfect gift? Our Christmas gift boxes come in three sizes, starting at only $10. Visit us at our Carmichael Road or Prince Charles locations, or order online at Cookie Caterer New Providence and to the Family Islands. Sweeten your holidays with the Cookie Caterer. Get ready for the second annual Candy Cane Carnival, brought to you by Nassau Cruise Board, December the 7th, from 11 a.m. until 7 p.m. This free holiday event is perfect for the entire family. Enjoy sweet treats, fun games, and amazing performances by the All-Star Band, Royal Bahamas Police Force, Rhythm and Youth, St. John's College Choir, Lottie and the Scotch Conk Band, and more. This Saturday, meet us at the Candy Cane Carnival at Nassau Cruise Port, the place to be. Hello? Binder, this is me. Oh. Listen, I think that this Christmas, you should really get in the spirit of things. I mean, apart from the great prices, I think your customers would like to see more of you. So I think that you should, you should greet your customers, some in the morning, some in the afternoon. I don't expect you to be there all day. Now, now listen, now you know red is the color of Christmas, so I think that you should be in a red tuxedo. You would be saying something, huh? Your customers would really feel like Santa Claus reach. Mm, you can wear that red suit this Christmas. Sail ends December 21st. Love the show? Want to give your support? Become a sponsor today. Call 302-2300 for our rates and packages. That's 302-2300. Become a sponsor on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. <laughs> And we're back. Uh, what is this, Kermit? That's family? That's one family? No, he's saying no. He's saying no. That's Saxon say. The valley? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> you're all late for that. You're all late for that. <laughs> Let me behave. Let me behave. Back here on Guardian AM uh, with C.A. Nuri. My name is Dr. Cleveland W. And he's the third. Uh, also known as Kahun Anku Sarah. I'm here with my guest, uh, Chris Davis, also known as John Quad II. Um, we're running through a lot of different topics today with regard to the displaced Africans, the relation to this reality and today's social ills. We want to run back to the phone lines, uh, 323 of course, in the family of islands, 242-300-5720. The tax line is 422-4796. Let's run to the caller, Kermit, please. Hello. Good morning. How are you doing today, sir? Good morning. I'm Walt Sparky here. Hey, hey, hey my brother. Anku, Anku, yes, sir. Anku, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. How you doing, Old man? Brain, you know. Yeah, There's man. Remembrance problem. No worries, man. How you been? You know, when we talk about this Christianity nation and black, white, and things, it seemed to be always taboo in this country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for years, I was wondering why, why, why we didn't want to talk about this red, black, and white. Because... When I listened to the Christian, the, the Christian story, I remember everybody was going to Egypt. Mm -hmm. oh. Moses' family ended up in Egypt. Come on now. Yep. Everything, right. from, yep. everything oh, came right. from Egypt right. until we hit 1604 and the so-called <laughs> King James had his 147 Oxford scholars translate the Roman Catholic Bible into the English King James the first mm -hmm. version. Yes. Remember I said the word is version. Version, that's correct. It was only his version. Mm -hmm. And when the king in 16, 1611, seven years it took for them to translate that, mm -hmm. then he decided, okay, he could send this to the Western world with the, with the Spanish and all of them. Mm -hmm. And from then we were scared to talk about the Egypt thing. We was, grow when I was growing up, listen, give, me a, give me a moment here and we'll talk. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up as a youngster, I used to question my Sunday teachers 
in regards to this white man, they had him in the front of me in the altar of St. George's. Mm-hmm. I used to get beaten for questioning my teachers because they'll tell my mother about me, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you understand my coming I get you. I, I got so. you. Now, the same thing happened to Jesus when he was 12 years old. When he went to the temple and they were... Mary and Joseph was missing them after they was going back to Nazareth, mm-hmm. after paying their tax to Caesar. Mm-hmm. They missed the boy, but they found him in the temple questioning the high priest in them, remember? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, you sir. remember the first thing the high priest said, Mary? What man? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That means he was a young 12-year-old man. Yeah. But in those days, the, 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 the families used to travel by caravans all over the place to China and so forth. They used to bring back goods like silk and stuff, for clothing and things, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Silk Road. They used to travel to caravans to different right. groups yeah. and so forth. Still existed. And then. the 18 mm-hmm. years missing in Jesus' life, between 12 and 30, when he came out of the wilderness at 30, was 18 years missing out of his life in the Bible, and none of my teachers got to tell me where he was. Well, I, I know where he was. I can't get into that today, <laughs> but, but I, no, I, but I, but we can do a show on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe he was traveling on them caravans. That's why he learned so much about so much different religions and languages, yeah. when he came back, he started his ministry with 12 guys. Mm. And it only lasted three years before they put him to death, you know. <laughs> yes. Yes, Sparky, thank okay. you so much. I'm going to get to these other callers. I appreciate you calling, man. Thank you so much. 323-62-32-325-4316. Uh, Guardian AM with CA Neri. Let's run to the next caller, please. Yeah, good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, 52. Hey, brother. Trying to get in for about fifteen or twenty minutes to produce. I don't know what's. But listen, man, I, I wanted to get this. And that was my fault. That was my fault. I I was letting my brother talk. But go ahead. No, 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 no. It, it was just to hang up the phone, keep hanging up. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. But what I wanted to get in because I wanted to augment what Chris was saying. I appreciate Chris so much. But the thing is, they, they also want us to believe Chris because I've read it uh, African history for decades, right? Right. So there, 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 there were African slave tribes who who are uh, in seeing slave ships docked up on the west coast of Africa with a talk. Right, they, of uh, course. Uh, of course. And, and their, their our hero, our hero uh, John Cano is one of them. Yes. Like Senegal and mm-hmm. Benin and places like certainly, that. And, certainly. And also, hello? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. And, yes, sir. And, and also, one of the misconceptions is uh, the, the Portuguese were in the slave trade as early as, as, as the 1400s, right? There was a sailor named Gil Anus. Maybe mm-hmm. that's our uncle cousin, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Gil Anus, when he, in his first uh, trip, he went as far as the Azores or some Canary Islands, that's right. the rest of the, uh, the African coast. And he brought back, he, he captured slaves and yep, carried them and back. Right, to, that's to, to, the first to, to incident, right. Ferdinand, and he would give them information, and then they further traveled down, trying to reach right. Cape, Cape of Good Hope. I know those history too, but these are the type, this, this is the reason why we are in the position we are today, Chris, because right. they're deceiving us. And also, use common sense, their knowledge stuff. Mm-hmm. Why, if, 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 we, if we trade, if we were all products of slave uh, of wars amongst African people and trade to tell one another, how is it that so many of us could come here on just being <laughs> captains of slaves? Right. You know the numbers are too great. Bless right. them. Yeah, oh yeah, certainly. Yes, yeah. my brother. Um, and there's actually a document um, for anyone who listening to any of the history buffs. It's actually called Capture. So if you type in Capture, quote unquote, slave narratives, mm. um, PDF. Mm. Yeah, Capture. Um, quote unquote slave narratives PDFs mm. um, it actually gives you about 20 examples um, wow. of Africans who first hand and second hand some of them hearing it from their parents and reiterating it um, first of all not one of them say my own people enslave me right mm. um, and this is where because we've been so stripped of it in our, and, and even understanding African ethnicity mm. is lost right mm-hmm. so let's just focus on Ghana for example about 95 distinct different cultural groups mm-hmm. Different tribes, if you want to call them that, um, different languages. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Just in Ghana. Um, down to the molecular level. So if me and you do a DNA test of people of African descent, don't care if you in Jabim and I anywhere else, our DNA will always be um, more differential than mm-hmm. you and any other person of every race. Right. That's because everybody stem off of us. Yeah. We are the original people, That's right. original humans. You mm-hmm. understand? So down to the molecular level, Africans are more diverse, right? And here you have Russia right. fighting Ukraine. 
same religion, similar language, <laughs> right? using the same ciphers to write with, right. and people who are far less diverse. But because we understand European nationhood and diversity and respect it, of mm. course, more than we do Africa, mm. um, we, we don't say, look at these Europeans fighting against each Aye other. Lord. They killed us. I see 70 million people died in the totality of World War um, II. Mm. And that's not, of course, including the genocide perpetuated on the Western um, European Jews, mm. right? Which was somewhere around six or seven million. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. um, but nobody, and of course, the Jews were Europeans, mm -hmm. and this was the other Europeans doing it. No one to say, Look at these white killing, that's right. See? Why don't uh, white violence? So, and mm -hmm. so, what we do now, of course, we have this term black mm -hmm. on one side, black means any person of clear and obvious descent, mm -hmm. but on a deeper level, we all have a similar. Um, history and background, and that is what brings mm -hmm. number one. And number two, if you do a DNA test, though we know your um, great grandfather from Yubakotua um, in, in Western Nigeria, mm -hmm. he was a Yoruba. Um, if you do your DNA test, you won't be 100% Yoruba. Right. Um, and, like, and like I do, and like everyone else does, you can have that Nile Valley DNA in you too, where yes. original people um, came from. Exactly, right? man. Yeah. We just out of time. Carla, I'm yeah. so sorry. Uh, we are not able to get this. Yeah, to pick it up again one yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, we definitely do. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been Guardian AM with C.A. Nuri. I got one text there that say, hey, Chris and Uncle, it re as it relates to the hair, many black youths are plotting up here. I say, not up, don't plot up. Yeah. <laughs> I can uh, never even say the, that. <laughs> even the plot is us, man. You get the Fulani exactly, birds and the exactly, Congo, the Congo exactly. girls, you know, everything yeah. is us, man. But we good. definitely yeah. appreciate uh, all of the texts. Um, did you know that the New York University Public Safety Lab and Data Collective for Justice Data found similar admissions disparities in 2019 across all the country? All right, what are we going to do? Text up. I can share this with uh, Brother Chris, uh, John Quad a second, and we can jump on this another time. But thank yeah, you so much. Uh, appreciate it, man. Howard friend. Grant is on next. I thank you so much for joining us today, John Quad a second. My, my name is Anku Sara. I appreciate you all being here. Stay tuned to, to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, old.